Welcome back. As promised, this will be a video about using the reverse side of the KL1 circular slide rule, uh, which is the trigonometry side. Um, I'm comfortable with calling this a slide rule now, because uh, if you use the back side, uh, the way it works is that the back side is fixed and only the needle moves. Think of the needle as the cursor. The front side can spin, um, leaving the needle alone, so that's like moving the slide. So you can move the slide, which is moving this face with respect to the back face, and then you have a cursor here. The fixed indicator is always aligned with the index of the reverse side, right? The front side is movable, but that is always aligned with the index on the trig side. Okay, so either the index of the S scale or the T scale, as we'll see. Um, first of all, notice that the outermost scale here on the back is a reciprocal scale. So if I set that with the needle, um, to use reciprocals you need to first uh, close the slide roll, uh, so bring the fixed indicator to the index. Uh, then if you found say 5 here on the front side, it'll read the reciprocal 2 on the outermost scale on the back side. Okay, all the trig scales are keyed to this reciprocal scale, which means this is most like using a slide roll like this, where you have the trig functions on the base, right, and you're going to use the trig functions on the base, uh, you can direct read them, okay, but if you flip from one side to the other, it's like using them with the CI scale. Now, of course, that's something you can do, and we'll talk about how to do it. Uh, so see here, here is a computation on the regular slide rule, sine of 30 degrees times 8, out to the index here is 4. So uh, you can do multiplication uh, from one side to the other. We'll do some examples um, of your trig function, uh, like you could do it on here, although that's not the common uh, use. Okay. Now let's do some direct reading first. Um, for sines and tangents of small angles, right, less than 5.7 about, you use this first part of the spiral. So let's bring the indicator around to the 4 degrees there. There's 3, 4 degrees. Okay. And you see it reads uh, key to the outer scale um, about 0 0.07. Okay, remember in that range it should be 0 0.07. Uh, if you continue around the spiral um, past this mark, the 5.7 mark, it continues with tangents. So if you come around to 20 degrees, um, you get about 0.365 on the outer scale. Okay. Um, if you want a sign, however, past um, about 5.7 degrees there, you should not use the spiral. Uh, you should use the sine scale, which is the next one out. Uh, so just need to move the needle a little to the left. And you see that the sine of 20 degrees is slightly less, about 0.342. Okay, now you could uh, do inverse trig, of course, by finding the uh, sine first. Let's find 6.5 on the outer scale and then read about 40.5 on the sine scale. Okay, of course, to compute an arctangent, you should be careful. Uh, between 0.1 and 1, uh, you can, of course, use the um, inner spiral of the uh, tangent scale, like a regular T scale. Um, you can also do angles which have an even smaller tangent by using the ST scale. Of course, the tangent uh, over 1, between 1 and 10, the common trick for that on slide rules is to use a cotangent, right? So I'm going to take the reciprocal of 5.7. Uh, now to do that, I need to make sure this side is closed. So found the 1 there. Then I'm going to find 5.7. I'm on the front side. There's 5.7. Um, it's closed. So then when I flip, the reciprocal is reading here on the outer scale. Okay, so then I look at the tangent scale. I see about 10 degrees. Of course, what I computed there is a coat... Uh, the cotangent, uh, so what I really want is 80 degrees, uh, switching back to the tangent. Uh, if you're confused by that, go see some of my more basic slide rule videos. Okay, uh, so let's see how we can use the two sides uh, in tandem more directly. Um, so let's say we want to do a common calculation, say sine of 30 degrees times 12. Okay, well you want to think of this as using the S scale versus the CI scale, so in other words it solves inverse proportions, right? 
if I align two things with the needle, okay, uh, think of them as the one side, and then the result on the other side, um, you, could, you could move the needle once you uh, slid the slide roll by moving this face. Um, but uh, for the common calculations, you just want to do sine times something, tangent times something. Uh, you can use the fixed indicator here. Um, as the other thing there, so it's 6 times 1, this number times 1. Uh, let's see how you could do that. So, it doesn't matter what state you're in, find 30 degrees here on the S scale, right there. Um, then you want to multiply by 12, flip over. Then you want to slide the slide roll uh, so that 12 is aligned with the needle. Uh, let's see. Okay, so once you've done that right, the cursor essentially is aligning 12 with the sine 30 degrees. So then when you do that, you come out to the indicator, uh, right, which is aligned with the 1 on the back side, then you read the result, 6, right? So it's that easy. Find the angle, uh, slide the slide roll by rotating this side uh, to the needle also, read the result at the indicator. Let's do a tangent. Okay, so I want to do a tangent of 20 degrees. I look at the tangent scale. I find the 20, then I flip, I want to multiply by 70, uh, so I slide the slide roll here, so the 70 is under the needle, then result is under the indicator, about uh, 25, sorry, yeah, 25.3 I read before, it looks more like 25.5 now, okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this. So normally on a slide roll, if we wanted to do this law of sines problem, uh, right, I want to find this side, I would set up this proportion. Sine 22 degrees over 24, um, right, is sine of 43 degrees over the quantity I'm looking for. Um, because I'm dealing with the reciprocal scale, uh, I'm going to cross multiply here and get x times sine 22 is 24 times sine 43. Okay, and I'll deal with this side first. Uh, what I'll do is I'll find the uh, 43 on the sine scale. Right, this is an inverse proportion which I can solve uh, front to back. Uh, so I found the 43 degrees there. Then I need to align that with the 24. So I align that by moving the slide roll so that 24 is under the needle. Okay, then I want to move the needle, which is like moving the cursor, uh, to the 22 degrees on the S scale. Then on the other side, align with the cursor should be the result. Uh, result about 43, looks like 43.8 now, I read as 43.7 before. Okay, awesome. Let's do this uh, right triangle calculation. Um, Remember, the Pythagorean theorem is hard to do on a slide roll. Same goes for the circular slide roll. Uh, but I'm going to use the technique which I first did in the video on this slide roll uh, called trigonometry on Euro-style slide rolls uh, to solve this problem. Uh, so I'll solve two inverse proportions, uh, this one and then this one, uh, giving me result H. So the first thing I'll do is I'll move the fixed indicator to this 265. Let's do that so you can see everything. Okay, so fixed indicator here is 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, 6, 5 at the fixed indicator by my thumb. Okay, then I'll move the needle to this 580. 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, then on the other side underneath the cursor should be tangent theta. Okay, so if I look at the tangent scale, I see the angle there is about 24 and a half, right? You don't need to write this down. But what I want to do is I'm going to solve this second inverse proportion, right? Remember that I, I moved the needle. I haven't moved the slide, so the indicator is still aligned with the 265, okay? So all I need to do to solve this proportion is to move the needle to sine of 24.5, which is there, then when I flip, H should be reading at the needle. 
and I see about 6.4, so 640. Okay, uh, it's that simple. I hope you've enjoyed this video about uh, trigonometry on the KL1 circular slide rule.